to me. And there we go. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. I am here with the guys from Just Be a Dad podcast. We have TJ in the house, and we have Nate. Gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? Good, man. How are you? Excellent. I'm doing great now that we got this all figured out. This is uh, something that should come second nature to all of us, being that we do podcasts and we stream on the regular. But of course, it's always a struggle. I can't figure out my Gmail. I'm having a network error. I have to send one through Facebook Messenger, the other through email, and it's all fun and games until TJ shows up and can't figure out the mic option. It's just always something, man. Always. Always. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Talk to me. Let's talk about Just Be a Dad podcast. Let's talk about the very genesis of it. How did it start? How did you guys meet? And how did the idea for the podcast come up? Well, I know Nate. Um, Nate, I know we've talked about this on air. Yeah. I don't know how many times. I can't. I don't know how many years it's been now. Six, seven, something like that. Yeah. And um, we used to work for Dunbar Armored, which was an armored car company. And I heard about Nate a little bit and then had the pleasure of working with him. What they would do is basically they just stick you with a driver and they'd be like, all right, this guy's going to drive you around town while you deliver money all day. Okay. And uh, Nate and I got to working together and we realized that we both had a really sick, twisted sense of humor. So uh, it worked out fairly well. And uh, we uh, lost contact and either he found me on Facebook. I found him. I don't remember. And we started talking and um, about a year and a half ago, um, I got laid off of a job and I was sitting around doing nothing. And my girlfriend's like, you want to start a podcast, start a podcast, talk about dad stuff or something. And that's kind of how the ball got to rolling and stuff. And I reached out to Nate last minute and I was like, Hey, I'm going to start a podcast. You want to join? He was like, okay. So that's, you know, that's the gist of it. That's the short end. Okay. Well, well, here's where it gets real. Was Nate your first choice to do a podcast with? He was my only choice to do a podcast. (laughs) What was your uh, what was your immediate reaction, Nate? You get the message from TJ. What were you thinking? I mean, initially I was like, eh. It was again, it like it was something that was out of my comfort zone. So I was just like, eh, I don't know if I want to do it, but I was like, eh, you gotta try some. And this was around a time where uh huh? Yeah, I'm gonna explain later. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is around a time, I think right before uh corona hit, like once we got uh quarantine so and it's just like i wasn't really working so i was still helping him out because he was still at the time trying to stream and get the podcast going so i was helping him get all the uh equipment that he needed and he was just like hey you want to do this and i was just like eh, you know why not you know it's something out of my comfort zone something i need to start doing so i was like sure let's go for it and then at that point it just initially i really didn't want to i like i was just like i don't know how i feel about being on camera and talking about stuff. So then it just like, it just comes natural. I can't lie. When I think about you two in an armored car, the image of John <laughs> Candy and uh, I believe it was Steve Martin in the movie. That definitely comes to mind for sure. Yeah. Um, was it something where like the chemistry when you two got in the truck together was like right away or did it take a while TJ for you guys to warm up to each other? I used to have a saying, uh, not really a saying, but, I kind of went through a checklist of uh, things that when anytime I got thrown in with a new driver, which was every few months, you know, I'd ask him, you know, where are you from? What's your story? You married, got kids, single, whatever. And um, I believe Nate had either just gotten married or was about to get married. Okay. And, um, you know, we, we just, we hit it off. And like I said, our, our humor is so dark and it just, it, we, we just instantly clicked. I think, um, I think there was probably like an hour of just not a whole lot of talking, but I wasn't a morning person back then. And I'm still not now. Surprise, surprise. Um, but once the ball got rolling, you know, we just, we started talking it up, chatting it up. And that's at least how I remember it. Be, be yeah. Be honest. That's, that's just, <laughs> let's just be honest here. It's, it, it's like, it was like six 30 in the morning. No one wants to talk, but the intriguing thing was someone, I'm not going to say any names. One of us had a black eye. Which started, which kind of got, so which was kind of like we, I think it was our first stop, and I was just like, you know what, screw it. <laughs> what the hell happened to your eye? <laughs> and it just kind of went, and it just kind of went from there. So it, it, it kind of just like, it was again, it was 6 30 in the morning. I'm not a morning person, neither is he. But I was like, I had to know what happened to his eye. Like it was, it was purple. <laughs> Shit was purple. So I had to ask, I was like, what happened to your eye? And he just like, uh yeah, so I got into a bar fight with some bikers. So I was like, 
<laughs> he's never going to let me live that down. Ever. Never, ever. never, never, ever, ever, ever. Yeah, I've got to imagine. I mean, this big burly white guy is in the truck. He's got his beard. He's got his spit cup in hand. And you see the black guy. You're like, oh God, I can only imagine what's going on here. Yeah, so I, I, I had to ask. So, so I just, <laughs> so I just asked the question of what happened, and he told me. I was like, and I thought it was the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. I was like, so you got drunk and decided to pick a fight with bikers. Great. That's well, to be that's fair. Funny. They picked the fight with me. <laughs> as far as you, as far as you remember. It's funny you say that. When I was younger, I went to some college party and I was barely in college myself and ended up getting into a little scrap that night. I go to Walmart where I work the next day, working in the toys department with a big old shiner on my face. So that was a lot of fun. Oh, my God. And your coworkers uh, won't leave you alone about it either. Everybody's got no. a good story. Oh, yeah. I had to. We were going to be in the truck for 12 hours. I had to hear that story. Now, uh, we, we are doing this uh, podcast with Just Be a Dad, coincidentally, on International Women's Day. So if your partners are listening, or Nate, I think you're communicating right now. I was uh, she, just, she just woke up. So she's, <laughs> she, I, again, I got to tell you, she's having a pretty rough day. Um, yeah. So so she just woke up. She's going to go get her something to eat. So she oh, wants perfect. to take my truck. So, yeah. Hey. That's that's a beautiful thing. Sometimes it's give and take, right? Yeah. Didn't she just get a new car? Yes, I did. Brand new truck. She did too, didn't she? Yes, she did. But my truck is behind her, so she's been wanting to drive it for a while. So convenient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> convenient. So Nate, how many kids do you have? I have one. You have one child. How old? Yes, she is five. Great. Okay. TJ, how about yourself? Uh, I've got two daughters that are actually mine. And then I've got two step kids. So in total, I have four kids and I consider them all my kids. I've got um, a 15 year old daughter, a 13 year old daughter, five year old stepdaughter and a 12 year old stepson. Well, you definitely got a full plate over there. Yeah. <laughs> now what's, I mean, talk about, cause we'll get into the rest of it, but I mean, being a stepdad, was it anything that you ever, I mean, I don't think anybody ever anticipates that per se, but I mean, you just come into a situation what are you thinking? What are the kids thinking? How long was that warm up period? Uh, well, the warm up period was it was fairly quick. Um, her son's, you know, he's always been a big football fan. So, of course, we were talking football. Um, at the time when I met him, he was somewhat of an AM fan. Now, he won't admit to that. Um, but uh, he's, he's no a man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> at the time, he was somewhat of an AM fan. Uh, he, he, jumps around. He was a Bama fan. He was an LSU fan. I, you know, I don't know what it'll be next year. Um, but he and I, you know, we kind of hit it off. Uh, I got him into playing video games. And then, of course, all of a sudden, friends going down on Fortnite. And I was like, okay, I'm odd man out. So, um, and over the years, it's been tough because I didn't grow up with, I grew up without a dad. Now, I had positive, mold, you know, role models in my life that were males. Um, but I never actually had a dad around. So, trying to find that fine line was... It was, it was difficult. Uh, Cassie, when I met her, I believe she was about two, about to turn three. And I, I love babies. So I'd get in the floor and, you know, play toys with her, Barbies, whatever, tea party. And it, you know, it was an instant classic. Okay. So, so sports were the pretty – sports were the end with him, and then she was young mm -hmm. enough to where it could kind of be anything. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then, I mean, you said uh, otherwise upbringing, it never really was a – Never really was the best situation, right? It was kind of just you were on your own at some points. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had a mom who she pretty much raised me. Um, sorry, I have a five-year-old getting ice right now. Um, I had a mom that raised me. She worked three jobs, and she had a daughter when I was about 13. Same mom, different dad, obviously. Um, and so I was busy raising her, and I had a great-grandfather, a grandfather, and an uncle to kind of you know push me along. Okay. But in our family, it's all about tough love, you know. Good job. Now go out there and do it again, and don't screw it up. So that was kind of my upbringing. What about you, Nate? What was your uh, childhood like? Oh, my childhood was fun. I mean, as far as I can remember, <laughs> for the most of it. He no. won't admit it, but he's adopted. <laughs> no, it was fun. Um, I grew up in a. Most people would say it's a very large family. Um, no, it was fun. Like. I mean, I, it took a while to like to meet a lot of my brothers, 
uh because we had all, all have different moms but uh eventually like later in life we end up all living together at one point so uh, life was fun i mean we got what we wanted we didn't have too much to ask for um we got raised like every other boy you know don't cry get up brush it off you know you know there's the normal the normal way to raise a boy but um no it was fun we, we didn't have too many issues uh you know we fought like you know boys will be boys you know we fought a lot we got in trouble a lot got grounded a lot that was there was <laughs> there was that <laughs> that was a big thing um but my dad he was he was one tough person i can tell you that much like he hey like, we screwed up he made sure we understood it but nah no nah, like i said it was you know we had a pretty decent childhood nothing, nothing to complain about so only brothers did you have any sisters none all boys how is that how is that translated into you being a uh a daughter daddy uh initially i thought i couldn't i i was just like there's no way we can have girls there's just no <laughs> possible way and then my second oldest had a girl so i was like hmm, maybe there's an it maybe there's a, there's a possibility then i had mine i was like okay so there it is but no uh she's she's a mixture of me and her mom but she's mostly me because she like, so we broke the news to her that we happened to put her cat down. And the only thing that came, the first thing came out of her mouth is, I want another cat. <laughs> so you just gonna ignore what I just told you and say, I want another cat. What, mind you, her mom's sitting next to me crying, like in full tears. And she's like, I want another cat. I don't want one cat, I want two cats. Like, so you just ignore everything I say, but she's i mean she's a handful like right now she has she's i feel like she's in her teenage years already because she she comes home from school she goes directly to her room turns her tv on <laughs> and shuts the door and that's it she don't want to be bothered if you go in there she tell you get out she only wants she only <laughs> wants you to bring her food and that's it everything else she, leave me alone i don't be bothered that's okay. hilarious <laughs> I do have to give a quick shout out to Rena Watts, Rena Friedman Watts. She has her own podcast called Better Call Daddy. It is fantastic. Random topics, random guests. Please check it out. What she does is she'll do a podcast with her guests, and then afterwards she'll get a hold of her father, who also has listened to the conversation, and he will give his give his analysis of the conversation. He is a charming man. She is a charming woman. Please, when you get the chance, check out Better Call Daddy from Rena. I'm having a problem speaking tonight, boys. Rena Friedman Watts. Welcome wow. to my world. It's gonna be a long podcast. Okay. Um, pregnancies with the first children. Did we want to know the gender? Or did we keep it a surprise? Start with you, Nate. Uh, no, nah, we once we found out, we announced it. Like we did. We. I, I'm the type of person like I have to know. Like you, I don't. I'm not. I don't do well with secrets. Um, no, I need to know right then and there. <laughs> I gotta know. What about you, TJ? Uh, well, both of mine, neither one of mine were planned. I mean, most babies aren't. Um, but uh, the first one, I, I wanted to know, but I, I was hesitant. I was there. He goes with his phone again. I'm on a podcast, and this is what I got to do. Um, no, the first one, I was I was curious, but I was and I anxious all at the same time. But I was like, I want to hold off. And then the next doctor's appointment, I went to. I was like, all right, I got to know what is it. <laughs> Um, with Haley, uh, when my ex-wife, uh, Jay was pregnant with Haley, everybody thought it was going to be, a, be a boy. Even the doctors were like, you're having a boy. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's an old myth that boys, when, when a woman is pregnant, the boys rise higher up in their bellies. And that's the way Haley was until nine months. And we we're like, this is a boy. This is a boy. And the doctor finally looked at me. I think it was like month seven and went, you're having a girl. <laughs> what? Hey, TJ, you want to hear a funny story? Mm -hmm. That happened to Justin. He was supposed to be a girl. Like they were, my mom had everything prepared for a girl, and he came out a boy. <laughs> I was like, "How do you?" And it's funny you say that thing about. Um, oh yeah, it's it's funny you say that thing about being high up in the belly because that's exactly what my wife thought uh, early on. I mean, she's due in late July right now, and I guess there's that like combined with the the heartbeat. You know, I guess over like 160 beats per minute is more likely to be one sex or the other. So we thought maybe we were going to have a boy early on. And then we found out recently we're having a girl. So yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. 
but uh um I, what about you nate was that i mean tj said neither of his were planned but i never really heard that from you were you, were you guys planning on having a child Mm. I, I'm gonna put it like this when they found so here's what happened when she found out. She walks in. Now, mind you, they have to pee on a stick. Okay. <laughs> she finds out, she comes in, she throws the stick at me, and then walks out of the room. So I'm like, what why did you just throw a stick at me? And then I look down and I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> and she was mad for she was mad for a while. Problem. She said it's my fault, but I'm like, hey. I wasn't doing this by myself. So, but uh, she, no, she it's was our fault. She, yeah, she did ruin her life. Yeah, you know, but she, I mean, she got over it. And then, you know, that's when, you know, the happiness set in. And, you know, we just kind of went from there. I mean, obviously, we were unprepared. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't something that planned this. I mean, the second one is going to be planned. So I don't know how that conversation is going to be once they get older. One's going to be like, at least I was playing and you wasn't, you know, I don't want to deal with that argument, but you were an accident. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, it was, it, it was, for me, it was a, a mixture of emotions. Cause like I was ready to be a dad, but then like I wasn't. So it was kind of like a mixed emotions. Did you call up your parents right away or. Oh man. I... No, we, so once she found like once she found out from the stick, she actually she, we held off till she went to the doctor to find out if she actually was pregnant because a lot of those tests are crap. So she was like, I want to go find out from the doctor first before I, we announce it. So I think it was like two or three weeks before we actually announced it. So what about you, TJ? Who was the first person you told <sighs> with your first child? The first person I told would be uh, my best friend, Jared. Um, he's my confidant. I tell him everything. You know, I told him, I was like, uh, I'm going to be a dad. I was 19. And uh, he's like, you, you're, you're what? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a dad. Um, you know, and it, it was shortly after we told my mom and my grandparents and everybody was ecstatic. Um, I'd wanted to be a dad since I was a kid. Uh, growing up, I wanted to have like six or seven kids. When I had my first kid, I was like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Diapers and formula are expensive. Extremely. Yeah, I mean, that's something that we're luckily stockpiling up on right now, but I feel like still you can never have enough. That seems to be something. Mm -hmm. You can <laughs> never have if enough. you think you have enough, buy more. <laughs> <laughs> buy, buy more. Just always buy more because that is – they crap and, and eat so much. It's – it's it's ridiculous. Oh my god. Hold 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 on. Hey, hey, go away. Come in. You come in here. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, I uh, I can see what you're talking about with that cat now. I, I maybe oh, that's time. that's the other one. So we have two. So that's the that's the healthy one. The healthy one hates the dog and they fight all the time. So it's it's a madhouse in here. Dylan, what are you drinking? Uh I hate to admit it, but I went with a little malt liquor tonight. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> you, are you okay? Yeah. You're you know, not fine? From I mean, time to time, from time to time, you got to live life on the other side of the tracks, I got to say. So. Jeez, I was not expecting malt liquor, but I'm okay. <laughs> Jeez. Are you sure you're okay? I know. I know. It's <laughs> something that I'm not proud of, but damn it, it does the trick. Hey. I, I, I can't I, definitely that's a, that's the truth <laughs> that is now, definitely uh, the truth one thing that i've noticed with my wife is ever since she has you know been pregnant before she was probably one of the most independent people you'll ever meet <laughs> as far as just like you know i got this don't need you for anything uh i've you know i'm organized got my work life got this going got that going and, you know, I'm not going to say she's completely, completely changed up on me, but there is a lot that's more like um, maybe a little more compassionate per se, but not to say that she was a compassionate person earlier, but you know what I mean? Like just more like dependent on me, relying on me, you know, calling me the daddy and things like that. So, I mean, is that something you guys noticed uh, with yes. your pregnancies? They use it as a crutch and they, <laughs> and if you, and if you don't, and if you don't do it, they make you feel bad. 
<laughs> so whatever she asked you to do, like like mine used to ask me, she would like, hey, can you go to the refrigerator and give me something to eat? Mind you, all that you do is you know, get up and waddle to the kitchen. But hey, you know, but if you don't do it, they're gonna make you feel bad. Oh, so, yeah. but they use it as a crutch. I, I definitely believe they use it as a crutch. Mine did it a lot. Like <clears throat> it did could have been something that's like five feet from her. If We're she gonna had get a lot of hate mail tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it is an international <laughs> women's day. If she had to get up and get it, I'd be getting called into the room to get it. And then <laughs> It, yes, it would irritate me, but I would do it just so I didn't have to hear it. Because those mood swings are, they're not something that I, I'd rather not. There's a lot have of things you, I'd rather deal with than mood swings. Have you gone on a lot of late night trips to McDonald's? We didn't have to, but she ate a lot of weird crap. <laughs> a lot of weird crap. Like things that didn't go together, she would eat. And it just kind of weirded me out. And I'm like... You should be eating this, but she would eat it and enjoy it. So I don't know. They, they, I don't know where those cravings come from, but they come and it's weird. What about you, TJ? What were some of the bigger changes you noticed once pregnancy hit? Um, well, I mean, me and my ex-wife were fairly close. And when she had our first daughter, Samantha, it was fairly easy. A lot of her cravings were pizza and tacos. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was, there was a lot of late night uh pizza deliveries for us. Um, I can remember at one point in our apartment, we had a studio apartment when we first got together. And um, when she got pregnant, I'd look over into the kitchen and there was probably 10, maybe 12 pizza boxes. <laughs> um, you know, and with Haley, this, uh, the second one was, she wanted spicy foods, which was funny because she hates spicy foods. Yeah. And um, so that was, that was a big change. Um, she did get um, postpartum depression with Haley. Now, that was that was a big change because I'd be at work. You know, sometimes I'd have to work late or whatever, and she'd call me up and be crying and uh, all that kind of stuff. So it, it was it was a adjustment for everybody. So um, that's something I don't take lightly with postpartum depression because mm -hmm. their, their their bodies are always changing, right? Especially when they're pregnant. It, you know, yeah. times ten, and when you put that postpartum depression in there, it's man, it's it's hard on everybody. So, yeah, I yeah think that is, that's something that's very interesting to me. Something that's hard for guys to understand. I mean, how long did that last? I think she got it when she was five or six months along, and it lasted until she had Haley. Okay. Jeez. So it's not just something that, that happens um, after after birth. I've heard that it can, but I haven't experienced it myself. Okay. It's yeah. worse. I I mean, we have. I think we have someone in here in this family that actually experienced, it and it was terrible. Like, she wouldn't allow the dad to be alone with the kid. That's how bad he was. <clears throat> so yeah. I, I I think it's like it's it's like separation anxiety or something. But it just it's that plus plus the you know all the emotions and hormones and everything that's going and her body going back to normal. So it was just it's. From what I heard, it can get really, really bad. But, you know, I guess that's what happens when you got to, you know, take care of a, another person inside you for nine months. It really is insane. I mean, just looking at her day by day and, you know, I felt the baby the other night. It wasn't necessarily a kick per se, but she was moving around for sure. I could feel her in there. And th there's this weird thing for me. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of guys go through it and maybe other guys are different, but it's so it's got to be so much more real for her, right? Like I, all I see is my wife and she's complaining about this, complaining about that. But I mean, it, uh, I feel like for them, obviously something's growing inside of you, taking care of it. But for me, I'm just like, okay, here's another day where your back hurts. Here's another day where your feet hurt, you know? But once you, once you actually feel that first kick or feel the first movement, you're like, holy shit, you know, that that's mine in there. Like, this, is, mm -hmm. this is crazy. I'm going to be honest with you. It didn't hit me until she was born. Yeah, honest. right. It, That's it, I, yeah. Because it just, it's, I mean, you just, it looks like she's just getting fat, to be honest. That's what it oh, looks yeah. like. It's this is the course of like nine months, she's just getting bigger. And then once it comes, once the baby's here, then it's like, okay, this is a real thing here. <laughs> this, I, I'm going to tell you, like, is this, so this would be your first kid? 
Yes. So I'm going to give you some advice. Please do. Stay on the other side of the sheet. <laughs> okay? Stay on the other side. If you don't take any advice from me, take this advice. <laughs> Stay on the other side of the sheet. I don't care what they say. I don't care the noises they make. Because I got goaded by the doctor when mine was born. They was like, oh, look, I'm no, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. She came out with a full head of hair and it was like, and then he said something and it caught my attention. And I looked and it, it just don't do it. Just stay on this other side. Look at her, make eye contact. I don't care what you gotta do. Do not watch. Okay. Don't do it. Just that's just I'm gonna tell you, don't do it. Stay on the other side of the sheet. The sheet is your friend, indeed. It, it uh, really is. I mean, that that's something that you just can't unsee, I've got to imagine. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not at all. Can't unsee it. It's not beautiful. I don't care what women I don't care what women tell you, it's not beautiful. At all. So much hate mail. So much hate mail. <laughs> it's not, I'm just being honest because it 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 took a while for me to get that image. Images out of your head. It's a it's it's an amazing thing to see. But at the same time, it's probably the probably the top five disgusting thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> top five. Now, what was that night like for you leading up to it? I mean, did you have the diaper bag ready? Was the labor a long process? Um, it was the the. I mean, so initially, like you know, they have the times where they have the the Braxton Hicks contractions. Okay. So we had that one night. And we, I did 90 the whole way to the hospital just to find out that it was false. <laughs> but so the day of uh, her going into labor, she was feeling, uh, she was having contractions all day. So we were both at home and um, she was having them all day and she didn't know. So her mom comes home and she tells her mom and her mom's like, yeah, I think you're going, I think you're in labor. So we go to the hospital and they're like, yeah, she's in labor. So they got her admitted to the room. This is like, at this point, it's like 9.30, almost 10 o'clock at night. And um, we sat all night. I had to sleep in that stupid chair. It is so uncomfortable. I hate that chair. Did it have, uh, it didn't have the fold out or anything? It was just a regular it, chair. So it, re it reclines, but it reclines to a certain extent to the point where you're not like laying all the way down. You're kind of like on an incline. Gotcha. And, and then they were coming in the room like every two hours to every, like every, just to check on her. And, uh, and I, I, you, you get, you don't get sleep. You just, you don't get a full sleep. It just doesn't happen. So, but I mean, it was fun. I mean, you know, the next death thing was like one thirty when she was born. So, one fifty nine. Yeah, almost two o'clock. So it was, it was good. It was fun. It was. I mean, leading up to it was not fun because you just you're uncomfortable. You're tired. Um, if you had, if you hadn't showered that day, you, you know. But I don't care. So, so here, so here's the crazy thing. So they gave her like this medicine that numbs it so she didn't have any like she didn't have any like what? pains you did you did uh, this is fun hide it was not fun <laughs> it was painful it wasn't painful because she didn't feel it come up the point her mom and my mom were so mad with her because they had because they get the epidural they gave her like it was a constant drip which numbed her pretty much yeah. through the whole thing mm -hmm. So they actually had to take her off of it because she couldn't feel the contractions anymore. Okay. So it it's like I said, man, it's not fun. Now I gotta I gotta ask her directly. Was Nate panicking or was he cool as a cucumber? He wants to ask you a question. Ew. Dylan, he wants to ask you a question. What's up, Brandon? Oh. I don't know where the camera is. Just, Hi there. Hi. I'm um, doing. I love when a man says it's fun. It's fun for you, not for me. We're just going to celebrate hashtag International Women's Day here. No, no uh, biggie. Are we live right now? Yes. We oh, are. Crap. Okay. Hi. Hi. So I got Tired a question. Tired as a mother. There you go. Oh, that's I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, when when the night came and you were ready to go in, was Nate panicking or was he playing it cool? He was playing it cool. I was the one panicking. <laughs> he had the diaper bag ready and all that. 
Oh, we had that prepared our okay. before. So okay. yeah, it was just pretty much like grab it and run. Did you have any um ideas that you wanted to do beforehand? Like I'm gonna have a water birth, or I'm gonna do it natural, anything like that? I said give me the drugs. <laughs> I want the drugs and I don't wanna feel any of this. <laughs> and I'm glad I did it that way. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Look, can yeah. you give me can you give me any advice real quick before you go? I, I'm having a daughter in late July. Nate's piece of advice so oh, far was um, Nate told me to stay on the other side of the sheet. And that's yes. the best advice I've got so far. Yes. Uh, yes. So when I'll never forget the look on his face because he had to like how you know, he mentioned that my the epidural like they had to take me off of it because I couldn't lift. I couldn't move my left leg. So he had always told me he never wanted to see. Well, they asked him to move, so he went around. And when I, I watched him and his eyes the entire time, and when he went around, I saw his eyes and his face went white. There you go. Nice. And I was like, what's wrong? He's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. So don't look. That's all I have to say. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very yes. much. Before you go, sorry, last one. Is You're Nate good. a good dad? Uh, he's the best dad ever. Oh, thank he's you. He's the most amazing. Much. Best there partner I could ask for. <laughs> it was nice to meet you. Nice to meet y'all. I'm glad this is the way we met. <laughs> DJ. Yes, sir. The night comes. Are you panicking or are you ready to go? The first one I was panicking, but not for the reasons you would think. We had two diaper bags. We had one by the front door, one in my truck. Okay. I was more worried about her water breaking on the way to the hospital in my truck than I was anything else. <laughs> now, I'm from Texas. And, you want to talk about hate mail. Yeah. I'm from Texas, and if the, there's one thing that we love, it's our trucks, right? Um, no, in, in all seriousness, uh, we did have two diaper bags ready because I wasn't sure when it was going to happen, if I was going to be there. I was working weird hours. I was working nights. Um and when Samantha was born, it happened at about 10 o'clock. She had her first contraction. We just got through eating pizza and uh, she started complaining of heartburn. Her stomach hurt. She was having contractions. So I called the hospital and they're like, well, we can't give you any medical advice over the phone. I'm like, well, that's great. So I finally lay down about two o'clock in the morning. And as soon as I doze off, she grabs my arm. She goes, it's time. I went, okay. So I grabbed a diaper bag by the door. We got in the truck and I was doing probably 120 the whole way there. Um, and she was six hours labor and I think it was just about an hour delivery. Um, and then Haley, we didn't even pack it back. We, I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> because the we, one. The, yeah. The, the, well, no, it wasn't, it wasn't so much that it was, we were told that the hospital we were going to, they were going to have a diaper bag there for us. Okay. So, we didn't pack one or anything like that. It was once again, it was kind of late at night. It was 11, 12 o'clock at night. And uh, she goes to the bathroom. She comes out of the bathroom. She goes, I think my water just broke. And I said, okay. So once again, 90 down the highway and um, two hours labor, 30 minute delivery. Jesus. Dang. So Haley wasted no time. I'm trying to get in the Guinness book of world records over there. <laughs> this sounds like it. Jeez. I got I to gotta imagine you're playing that scenario in your head on the way to the hospital. Like, if I get pulled over, I'm going to tell the cop we're in labor. I'm going to get off right then and there. That's the, the, I played that scenario the entire time. <laughs> See, I was one of the few lucky ones. I mean, when I was 19, I was, like I said, I was, I don't remember what I was doing. I was, I was working nights. I know that. But I knew a lot of the cops in the area. So I wasn't okay. too worried about it. The second one came, I was in law enforcement. And I knew every cop on the way there. And uh, so I'm sitting there playing in my head. I was like, if they pull me over, they're going to know why. Because everybody knows that my, my wife is pregnant. So yeah. I, I wasn't too worried about it. But uh, it, it's good to have cop friends. That's all I'll say. Now, um, since your children have been getting older, have you noticed anything that maybe before they were born, you told yourself, I'm going to parent this way and I'm going to do things this way. And that has just totally gone out the window since uh, that's happened. <laughs> Um, I can say this, if you're going to have multiple kids, you cannot raise this, both kids the same way. You have to treat them as their own individual person. Um, that being said, I, I, I've taken a little bit of advice from everybody. You know, like I said, I had a great grandfather, a grandfather, an uncle. Um, I kind of took all their advices, kind of rolled it into one and looked at what my dad did. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Um, and, um, 
Samantha, my oldest, has a learning disability. Uh, we've talked about it many times on the show. Um, she basically has an intellectual disability where you or I would do something, you know, two, three, four, five times, it clicks in her, you know, clicks in her brains. Samantha has to do the same thing day in and day out. She eats mac and cheese, strawberries, and any basically anything with cheese and chicken nuggets. And if you throw something else at her, she's going to look at you like, what do you want me to do with this? You know, <laughs> um, the best way I can describe it is think if you've ever seen the movie uh, 50 First Dates, they do the same thing for her every day, day in and day out. And that's kind of what you have to do with Samantha. Haley... My youngest, she's she's a daddy's girl. She's a spitting image of me. Um, she is a sponge. She wants to learn about everything. She wants to be involved in everything. Samantha, TikTok videos and um, yeah, TikTok videos. <laughs> that's, that's her life. Um, Haley, she wants to be a mechanic. She wants to play football. She's got more guy friends than she does girlfriends. You know, um, I've got so many little boys chasing after her right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> but uh, no, it's. Um, <clears throat> I, I've learned that, like I said, you can't, you got to treat each kid individually. You can't treat them the same. Each kid has their perks. Each kid has their corks, just like an, a normal person would. Yeah. Um, and I, I've, I've learned growing up, you know, and I'm still learning. Um, I always said that my kids weren't going to be those kids that didn't want anything to do with their dad. And then they'll call me some of the weekends and be like, dad, we want to stay with mom. Uh, oh, okay. Um, are you mad at me? You know, it's kind of like that insecure boyfriend. It's like, are you mad at me, Daddy? <laughs> no, they're just teenage girls. <laughs> How about you, Nate? I mean, I'm going to tell you like this. Uh, any parenting books you've ever read or currently reading, just just throw it out the window. <laughs> just don't, don't. Those books are suggestions of yeah. what kids can do. It's not exactly shaped to what your kid's going to do because no. your kid's going to throw curveballs. That's what they do. They don't throw nothing down the plate. They don't come straight. It, they, 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 don't, they like to go off, off script every time. <clears throat> and mine does it a lot. Like, she's been doing it since she came out. Um, you know, they don't listen. You got to repeat yourself multiple times. So if you, if you ever had to – you have a dog? Oh, yeah. You have dogs, so you have yeah. so you know about repeating yourself multiple times. <laughs> All right, so just imagine repeating yourself to something that looks like you and can respond. <laughs> so that's pretty much what parenting is. It's a it's a constant you know constant reminder is like I don't want to have another one. That definitely don't want to have another one because all it, it's it's just you just gonna put yourself in a situation to have another one, and now you got to yell twice as much and repeat yourself three times as much, but no, it's, she's fun. I mean, she, you know, she's, she's fun to be around. Like she just enjoys life. Like she loves everybody. Like every, anywhere I take her, she makes friends. Like people love her. Um, she likes to be the center of attention to an extent, but once she gets real shy, then she's like, I don't want, I don't want to be bothered. Leave me alone. But she's very, she's a very outgoing person. I, if she was still up, I'd bring her in here, but She's she's very very outgoing. Um, again, she's she's a demon seed. So <laughs> she 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 will terrorize you. It, that's just what it. Like again, her mom hurts herself. She doesn't ask her mom if she's okay. She laughs. <laughs> she laughs, and she I never had no that. point. She no point asks if she's okay. Her mom could be in tears, crying, bleeding, and she's gonna laugh. Period. That's just what she does. And she gets it from me. So there's that. So uh, it's, it's an experience. I'm going to tell you that. It's definitely an experience. And being five, this must be either her, what, first or second year in school? Yes. This is her. She's in kindergarten now. So okay. she, so right now she's, she goes to a charter school. And thanks to this school, I have to learn two more languages, which is Spanish and Mandarin. Oh wow! Because she speaks, so fifty percent of her day is in English, the other fifty is in Spanish, and then ten percent of it is in Mandarin. Dang. So she's learning two more languages on top of English, and now I have to learn these other languages because the way this school is set up is they're expected to be fluent in three languages by the time they graduate. So oh. this is that. 
it's getting to the point where you're going to be two times dumber than your daughter, basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. It's pretty much where I'm sitting at right now. But she loves school. Like she, she loves it. I was happy when they finally let them go back to school, like in person, because it was something like. People didn't realize, like, once the quarantine hit, most people were complaining, like, all the adults were complaining and, like, oh, I can't do this and that. But nobody really paid attention to the kids. Right. Like, so she has so she has a little friend who lived next door. And she, they didn't see. So we went on quarantine in March. They didn't see each other again till July 4th. And it was, like, when they finally saw each other, it was, like, the, it was like the cutest thing ever. <laughs> like they just ran, they ran to each other and they hugged each other. Like they didn't care about COVID, none of that. They just and that's the thing. Like people wouldn't, they wasn't paying attention to the effect that this was having on the kids, yeah. especially those that are in kindergarten, because this is the time where they get, they build that social bond with other kids and they learn things from other kids. And it's like this is a very important time for them to be in school. And she. You can see it bother her because, like, she was like, I miss my friends and this and that. And once they finally got into school, it was just she took off and never looked back. Now, what has that been like for you, TJ? I mean, I can imagine there's been some remote learning mixed with some in person learning. I mean, have you seen, have you had to watch the kids struggle or how have they been handling that whole situation? Carter is in the seventh grade or sixth grade going into the seventh next year. Uh, when the first thing, when the whole thing first started, uh, we were lucky enough. I wasn't working at the time, so I was able to stay home with him. Um, my biggest gripe about the whole thing was parents were going, well, what are we supposed to do with our kids? Well, you had them. Um, <laughs> so figure it out. Um, but no, seriously, uh, we have a Carter's grandfather. The guy is dedicated to his, to his grandkids. Um, and he stepped up the big way. He came over because, let's face it, I'm not exactly the smartest bulb in the bunch. So... He came over, helped out with the math and stuff, and I kind of just made sure that Carter wasn't playing video games during all of his breaks. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was it was a challenge. Um, even for Cassie, you know, she's she's in kindergarten as well. And, you know, having to get a five year old to stare at a screen with the teacher talking, she's just like, Is this over with yet? <laughs> you know, and they started at like eight o'clock in the morning. Like <laughs> you can't expect a five year old to sit there at eight o'clock in the morning and stare at a screen for two hours. Yeah. But I mean, it was it was definitely a challenge, and you know, I give credit where credit is due. I mean, all the kids, all four of them, they they stuck with it. You know, they they put their heads down and they stuck with it, and they were able to get through it. Um, it but it was, I was one of those parents that you know, I was so glad to have the kids go back, and not just because they're driving us crazy and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they're kids; it's what they do. Well, let's face it, they were. <laughs> yeah, well, but uh, you know, like Nate said, you know, having that social interaction is so important. Um, you know, we're, we're going through something right now. You know, Carter's 12 year old boy, all he wants to do is sit in his room for 10 days at a time without showering and come out and <laughs> have to eat the video games. But, you know, in all seriousness, I mean, the kids have kept their grades up and it's, you know, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, Carter's school, they had his whole, I think it was his entire class on quarantine for 10 days, all because somebody on the other side of the building had COVID. Jesus he never came in right. contact with him. So he had 10 days of, and of course now he was like, can I do remote learning? I'm like, no, go back to school. <laughs> Get out the house. <laughs> so it's, it, like I said, it's been an experience. Um, I, I think it was good for him to kind of see how the way the world works, but now the kids don't have an excuse of uh, snow days in Texas. Mm -hmm. so. Have you noticed an impact grade wise? Um we were really fortunate this year. Uh, the kids, all of them, like I said, they, they put their nose down and they, they really focused on their, their studies. I think um, Haley has a 80. It's her lowest grade. Um, Carter, okay. I, I think the last time I heard his grades, like he has a 79 in one of his classes. So, you know, they're right there. I mean, could they do better? Yeah. But I mean, the fact that they're passing and the fact that they're dedicated to do the work, that says something. Um, so, but Regardless of what the kids say, I mean, they're happy to go to school and learn because they get that, that interaction with everybody. Right. So uh, it's been different. But uh, to answer your question short term, I've seen an improvement, but I think it's for the better um, because they realize how hard they have to work now. And it kind of gives them that little bit of extra uh, work ethic. 
<laughs> it's funny with with COVID. Like, as much as I wanted to, you know, brush it off toward the beginning, and you know, even now I can tell myself, well, I'm young, I'm healthy. If I get it, I'll I'll get through it, and I'll probably be all right. You don't like. There's a certain part of you that doesn't really think too much about the people it truly affects. I guess like there are people who have lost friends and family, you know, with COVID nineteen. I'm not going to deny that at all. So whenever I try to make light of it or I try to think it's not a big deal, I, I do have to remember there are people who have truly lost them, close ones to them. And that's something that we as, you know, a human race, I guess, need to take more into account. Like, of course, you're going to feel a certain type of way about something when it affects you personally. And you both have daughters. So there, there's a real, a real crazy um, conversation going on these days about, you know, uh i'm gonna go i'm gonna go down the road regardless of whether or not i'm qualified to talk about it but i mean trans rights is a really interesting seemingly big topic right now and it's something that i never really thought too much about as a kid it's certainly becoming more mainstream i feel like the same way you don't think about covid until it affects you personally you may not think about how these trans issues affect you until it affects you personally so let's just say for instance you guys each have daughters they're going to compete, perhaps compete in sports someday. I mean, I know for you, Nate, yours is only five. TJ, I'm not sure if yours is already competing in sports. You, As a father, you would feel a, a certain way about issues if your daughter could just never place first in her track and field competition because there is a trans female already in the sport. And you're thinking, man, if only, <laughs> if only this wasn't a thing. I mean, my daughter could get a scholarship. She could get into a better school. I mean, what do you what are you guys' thoughts about things like that when they come up? Because it seems like something that doesn't really affect you personally, you know, in your own lives, but it may to other people. You know what I mean? I mean, so be nice, Nate. <laughs> it, it's such a complicated. I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. So it's for me. It's a big. It's a real big issue for me because I don't care what you say. Like unless this unless this individual is like full, they like they went through the full process. Like they're on estrogen and everything. At that point, I don't care, because at this point, like they're they're you know they're in that stage. They're taking the estrogen. They're trying to get that testosterone knocked out. But if this individual is built like me, and and nothing looks like they've taken no no I'm sorry you can't do that because that's that's no. I'm not doing that with you because it's it's not fair. It's cheating. Needs to say it's cheating. It's it, it would be just like if uh, an NBA player or an NFL player were taking performance enhancers. It's right. it's it's physically cheating. It doesn't matter. So like let's say TJ because I, I like picking on TJ. So <laughs> if if we put if we got TJ on a six months. A six month regimen like of working out and dieting, he could probably outlift most female bodybuilders that's probably been doing it their entire life. Right. Just off because he's a man. And yeah. it's not saying that, you know, that they can't or they can't do what we do. It's just that genetically we're stronger. Yeah. We're faster. Like you can't compete. I'm pretty I'm slow. I don't know. You uh, uh, like it's just it's not fair. Like we are giving an upper hand on the opposite gender. It's just that's just the way it is. So when you allow biological men to compete with females, like they don't have a shot. And I've and I've seen a couple stories on Facebook about how like it's just, like they don't have a shot. Like they don't even come close. Yeah. Like scholarship wise or anything, like you don't even come close. So. And, and for any, here's my thing. Anyone who believes that a biological man that says I'm female. Now, if he, like I said, if he's going through the whole transition and he's on, you know. Which, the, from what I understand, it could take up to three years to really be, you know. Effective. Then then you got to sit and wait three years then. Right. Period. And if yeah. you miss, and if you miss out, you miss out. It's just what it is. But at the same time, like, because again, you're putting, that would be like allowing LeBron James to take steroids and compete in the NBA. Like it's already unfair as it is, but now you're giving him an extra 
Uh, no, it's, it's it like it's just not it's not fair. So you know, of people there's who, the argument that you know uh, some women already have higher levels of testosterone. Some biological women already have higher levels of testosterone, and therefore can compete at a higher level. That's fine, but their bone structure right. essentially is the same. They don't have broader shoulders, different pelvic bone. You know, all the, the it's a different areas. build. Like it's that, a yeah. totally different build. Like yeah. they can have like it's yes, they can have elevated testosterone level, but at the, at the end of the day, he was born a guy. Yeah. And again, like I said, if we put like you can find any guy and put them on a six months to a year regimen of just dieting and lifting. And I guarantee you they can outlift most female powerlifters that probably been doing it their entire life and do it with a breeze. And, you know, I feel bad for you guys because I took a hard turn left with this conversation. <laughs> he but doesn't like it. I enjoy it. He doesn't I, like it. I want to point out this is not an anti-trans rant. This is a this is a rant for women. I want to make sure that the competition, the playing field is even. And right. it seems like the more we go down this road, the less women are able to compete in these certain avenues from track and field to wrestling and all these different things. So I just want both sides to be considered just like we consider both sides of the roads with COVID. You know, consider both sides of with many things. So that being said, TJ, I mean, you have daughters as well. <laughs> well how would you feel if your daughter was, you know, in this situation? I mean, it, again, I don't think it affects a lot of men until they find themselves in this situation where they're watching their daughter struggle to compete. Well, I mean, you know, I agree with pretty much everything Nate said. Um, for me, you know, being as proud of an idiot as I am, you know, I'm going to tell my daughter to go out there and kick their butt. <laughs> nicely. Um, you know, and regardless of strength or anything else, um, do I like the idea? No, I, I think it's BS. And like Nate said, you know, wait your three years. If you miss out, you miss out. Um, you know, if they want to be called a guy, they want to be called a girl. Fine. I'll call you whatever. I don't care. Right. Um, I, I tend to stay away from topics like this for a lot of reasons. Um, a lot but, of people do, and I feel yeah. like, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I do I think it's fair? Do I think it's right? No, but it's a part of our world now. It's a part of our society. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm going to give you a short answer, and I'm going to piss some people off here. Um, I don't think transgender should be allowed in an opposite sex. That's just the, the, that's kind of my my feel about it. And if you want to do your you know do your drugs, do your surgeries, whatever. Wait the three years and go from there. That's 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 kind of where I'll leave that. It's it's, it's just what it, that's just what it is. Like honestly, that's just what it is. It's a tricky conversation because you don't want to be <clears throat> exclusive. You don't want to come off like you're anti anything. But I mean, there's a, you got to draw a line somewhere. That's the bottom line. Again, if you want to, whatever you want to be called, I'll call you whatever you want to be called. But at the end of the day, until like you've gone through the entire full transition. No, that's it's that's it's a no go for me. Like I'm sorry, like I just I just don't like you can't do this. Like you 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 are a cheat code at this point, and you're competing. Like so, the one story I did see was there was two guys. I don't remember where it was that, and these two guys couldn't. Excuse me. For they this. couldn't rank in against the boys. So then they was they said whatever. Well, we are women now, and they went against the females, and they placed first and second every time. Never yeah. fails. So I'm like, so if you can't compete with guys, so you're just gonna go and take the easy way out and go. No, that's that for me as a parent, it would make me mad. And it, and again, a lot of the a lot of schools and a lot of school districts won't touch it for the simple fact because they don't want. The backlash. Me personally, I don't care about backlash. Your child's cheating. So if he can compete, if 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 my daughter's wrestling and he walks on the mat, guess who's wrestling him? Me. Because if he can wrestle, I can wrestle. <laughs> it's that simple. If he's wrestling, I'm re or whatever. If they if, if that individual's wrestling, I'm wrestling. Period. I'm taking I'm taking that match. Period. You're not you're not doing this. I'm taking this match, and we go and I'm gonna show you exactly how unfair it is. Just so you can see it. And it, it go, ahead, huh? Nick, sorry. go ahead, Nick. Sorry. What's it, up, it, Like I said, it's just is it's a it's a double-edged sword 
but at some point you gotta be willing to fall on one of these edges. Like at some point, because people don't want to talk about it. And like, oh, if I talk about it, I'm be transphobic and I'm this and I'm that. No, you're not. You're just stating how you feel. Yeah. They can say what they want and how they feel, then you can say the same thing. I'm not afraid. I don't care, honestly. Like I piss people off every day, all day. <laughs> like it's a, it's it's a natural thing for me, so I don't really care. But when it comes to certain things like this, like and and I know for a fact that at some point she's going to have to deal with this. Like at some point, my daughter is going to have to deal with this because I don't see it. I don't see this issue regressing at all. Right. I, I don't I don't see it a regressing at all unless we have a major turnaround in this country, which I doubt. I don't I just don't see it regressing. So um, she's going to have to deal with it at some point, And we just I mean, we're going to have that conversation and we're just going to talk and go from from there no, i feel the same way i mean it's it's definitely something that never really popped up when i was a kid and nowadays you've got people putting their gender pronouns in their twitter profile so i mean it's definitely more of a, a relevant issue and again you know like it's nothing that i think something I'm, I'm not again not anti-trans not transphobic none of that we just want to draw distinctions in certain categories and uh, what the fuck was i gonna say <laughs> That, that <laughs> I had a really good point. I had a really good point. No, I just I, I want to be inclusive and I want to I want to be realistic. I don't think that guys who suck at sports are just going to all of a sudden say, well, I'm going to identify as a woman. Now, I don't think that's going to be a common thing, but I do want I, there's a lot of things that when I was younger, I didn't think would be a common thing that have become more of an issue than they were. So it is interesting for sure. And that right there, that point you just made is the exact reason why it happens. Because yeah. if I suck at, you know, wrestling against guys or playing basketball against guys or running track against guys, where can I go to, to make it easy? Oh, let me go and let me jump to the other side and go and dominate them. Again, I have to believe that's not going to become a common thing. But I get I, there's a lot of things that I, I wouldn't believe when I was a kid. Yeah, I mean, I don't believe it will, but I mean, I feel like at the same time that it's it's this issue is not going anywhere. And I feel like it's going to just continue to grow and it's just going to become like now everybody's all of a sudden, you know, certain people are raising their kids without genders and whatever it is. I, I don't want to get into it, but it's it. I feel like it's going to become an issue. I feel like it's going to become a really big issue. And it's not going to be women coming into male sports. It's going to be males going into women's sports. And I, me personally, women want to be inclusive. Y'all want things to be fair. I'm going to say something that's going to piss them off. But y'all ask for this. <laughs> you ask for well, it. I mean, let's be honest, right? I mean, there, there really are laws being proposed now that would forbid parents from having any say whether or not their child wants puberty blockers. So it's becoming a real issue. So exactly. it's, something, it's something worth talking about. Yeah. Uh, moving on from that, I don't want to make it too huge of a block. <laughs> TJ was uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that um, documentary, The Social Dilemma. I've seen parts of it. I haven't finished it yet. It dove into quite a bit about, you know, the way we are becoming addicted to things like Facebook, Twitter, and what have you. Um, the imp the real impact that it's having on kids and how they see each other and how there's kind of a popular, you know, like um, a social credit score, if you will, just yeah. based on how, how popular your profile is. Uh, it's something that's, you know, really saddening to see when you look at the number of little girls, especially that harm themselves and commit suicide these days. That's obviously something worth being pessimistic about, something that we could all, if you guys don't, if you want to share something, feel free but I'd rather flip to the other side of it. What's something that you see in your own children that makes you optimistic toward their future? Nate, you want to go first? You want me to? Ah, uh, go ahead. Cause I don't really have a, I'm trying <laughs> to probably fix a get a thought for this one. Biggest thing for me is, you know, I think we talked about this about a month ago on the show was, raise your kid to be a decent person, right? Um, we can't raise our kids the way our parents raised us. Nate said it best. He brought this point up. And my biggest thing with my kids is just be a decent human being. 
use your manners, help out when you can. Somebody asks you to do something, you know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, that kind of thing. Um, and I, I think we've done a pretty well job of instilling those values into them. Um, you know, like I said, right now, going through something with Carter and Samantha, they both just want to sit in the room and be on their electronics all day long. Well, that's great. But what are you doing to better yourself as a person? Right. Um, you know, um, one of the big things is um, w with Carter and I mean, this has been an ongoing conversation between me and Nate on the show and off the show is, you know, Carter has a lot of black friends and Carter sometimes wants to act on those, uh, act the way that his friends act and he can't do that. And I'm telling him like, man, you've got to, you know, you've got to approach this with caution. Um, are, we are we dropping end bombs over there? No, no, no. He um, thinks he heard it. He's not once, sure. He thinks he I heard think, it. I think, there, but I don't there's, know. There's no confirmation on it. But uh, no, you know, it's it's the rap music. It's the talking a certain way, doing this, doing that. But Carter is, he, he wants everybody to get along and he wants to help everybody. And I think that's one thing that, you know, his mom has really pushed and instilled in him and Haley's the same way. I mean, Haley's got friends that are cheerleaders. Haley's got friends that are outcasts. Haley's got friends that are special needs kids. And I think kids nowadays need to kind of take that into effect that just because somebody's different doesn't mean they're not a good person. And I, right. I think that's one thing, you know, even Samantha, she's a special needs child. And, you know, I, I've said this about my own daughter and I know I'm kind of tooting her horn here, but Samantha is the most lovingest kid you'll ever see. She she can never meet you before in her life. She'll walk up and give you a big old hug. I, can, like attest she's, I can attest to it. Yeah. That. So, you know, and she, she is the most lovingest kid you will ever meet. I guarantee you. Um, and that is one thing that I, I think this, this world and this society right now needs more than anything. I mean, aside from the six feet rule. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, and to, to bring in, you know, the conversation we were just having a little bit to this, I mean, if I'm going to be optimistic towards something, that's that's what I want to give the woke crowd, if you will, so to speak. I understand what you're trying to do. I understand the all inclusive. Let's all be on the same team and not have anybody. So that part of it, I do sympathize with and I, I'm optimistic about. I, I understand why certain things are said and done. You want everyone to feel a part of the same the, the party, the crew, you don't want anyone to be left out or felt hated or felt different, you know? So, so that part of it, I do sympathize with, and I'm not always jumping down the throats of people who are trying to be all inclusive. It's just, sometimes you got to hit the brakes, really look at things from, you know, full perspective. But I, I am, I do think that's a positive thing when it comes to quote unquote progressives and liberals is at least I understand they want to be all inclusive. So there is that. Yeah, they do to an extent. And that's where I have the problem. That's where my problem comes in at. Like, you want everyone to be included unless they think differently than you do. And that's my problem. Like, why can't we all just get along? Like, why can't, like, me personally, okay, like, <laughs> like, me personally, like, I don't, like, I don't hate people who, who vote a certain way or who think a certain way. Like, I don't hate, like, if you, if you want, if you want to be called whatever you want to be called, if you, you know, it is what it is. That's not my problem. What yeah. you do in your personal life is not my problem. Right now, when it becomes my problem is when you bring it to me and you try to force it on me. Now we have a problem yeah. because now I'm intentionally call you what you don't want to be called. <laughs> so don't that I that's what I, that's what I don't like. But I mean, when they say inclusive, they only mean certain people. Like if you if you don't think. Oh well, you know, trans trans women should be in women's sports. No, they shouldn't. But if I say stuff like that, then I'm a homophobic or I'm a transphobic. I'm not. I just use my brain and use common sense. And you know, if you really want things to be inclusive and you want everyone to be together and get along, then stop jumping down other people's throat because they don't think the way you think or they don't vote the way you vote. Or and it's and this for me personally. And this is why I I kind I gave up the whole the whole politics thing a long time ago, like Republican, Democrat, all that crap. Because they all they all I mean everyone hates everyone at the same at the end of the day. They hate this person because they voted for this person. You hate this person because he voted for that person. At the end of the day, it is what it is. 
Now, there's just some people who don't use their brains as much as other people. And they believe they believe they believe certain things should exist in this world. Like me personally, right now, I have a problem with this cancel culture because they're killing my childhood. Like, they're getting rid of certain things and it's making me mad. <laughs> and, I don't, and I don't like it. Like, leave my childhood alone. My childhood didn't do anything to you. Like, you need to be dealing with the stuff that you're dealing with right now. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, like I said, this, all this stuff that's happening right now, it's not going anywhere. It's only going to continue to grow. No one, no one on either side is going to see eye to eye, see eye to eye at the end of the day. It's just, we're going to hate each other until this world comes to an end. It's just what it's going to be. I'll say this. I never thought I'd see the day where it would be easier to buy a copy of Mein Kampf than it is to buy a copy of To Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street. So there is that. (laughs) We are in a a weird time. We're in a really weird time. We are. We are. And I I wish people would understand, you know, we're, we're all we're all people. You know, the differences between us are are so minuscule, so tiny. If we could understand the common ground that we all just want to be safe, we all just want our space where we can raise our family. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. But it always comes down to, I mean, social media certainly plays into it. Oh, my God. I hate it. You can use it for for evil or you can use it for good, like we're doing right now to have a nice conversation. But some people just want social credit score and to feel like, you know, they're the most virtuous of all. And they throw out ridiculous talking points and it becomes a real vacuum of crap. And that's the bad thing with kids like these kids now like that's that's what's important to them like being a decent human being is no longer important going viral is like watching someone you know fall down in the middle of the street and you laughing at them or get hit by a car your first thing your first thought is to hmm instead of helping or calling the police let me pull out my cell phone and record because someone else is going to do it what the next person next to you is thinking the same thing and you're recording the same person. Yeah. Like we like it's going viral is more important than being de- a decent person. Like that's what that's what it is. And this is why our world is the way it is, because social media uh, was that the cloud from social media is more important than actually saying, I don't care what this person thinks of me. I'm going to go and help this individual out. Like it's social media is the devil. <laughs> Period. It is the absolute devil. It has destroyed. It has destroyed a lot of lives. A lot. I, I, I said this a while ago, and I still stick to still stick to it. To me, social media is just like a gun. It can be used for good. A lot of people are using it for bad, and that's the problem. I mean, you have a young man recently who is at Cam Newton's football camp. Yes. Given a, a spectacular opportunity to shine and learn from a guy who is former Heisman Trophy winner, former number one overall pick, former Super Bowl contestant, you know, MVP. He's, there. He's where you want to be. And all you can do is give him crap because he happens to be a free agent, you know, nine, ten years into the league. It's it's crazy. It's that just was, crazy. That was a terror. That that was a bad look. Even if he, even him apologizing, like. That look, that's it's a bad look on you. Like me as a coach, if I'm your coach, we got problems. Like I, I don't know if I want you playing for me next year. Like I don't know if I want you playing on my team because if and and and, and a lot of people are defending him, saying, "Well, it was just you know, it was just him talking trash." No, no, no. Here's what here's here's where I would give him a pass. If they were at a park and Cam Newton showed up <laughs> to say, right. "Hey, hey, can we run seven on seven? But you went to his camp. Yeah. Your parents paid money out of their pocket to send you to that camp, and you oh, and you open your mouth like that? No, no, that's that's. And, and there were some analysts that were saying, "Oh, it was just him talking." No, that's unacceptable. I'm I'm helping you. Like this isn't like a friendly game of like this ain't like we met on a uh, in in, the, in some park and we just doing running seven on seven. You came to I'm helping you out. Like you came here to learn from me. Not the other way around. So you know, anyone who defended that that kid's actions is just as dumb as he is. And the apology, yeah, it was an apology, but at the same time, like that's going to stick with you. Like you're going to be the kid who went to Cam Newton's football camp and talk shit to him for no reason at all. 
Oh yeah. And I, I, I get I me personally, I gotta give Cam props because I'd have boy I'd have lit to his I'd have sent him home. You gotta go. I don't care how much money your mom, you gotta go. You gotta go take get your stuff. I hope you have fun. Hope you have fun with your little 15 minutes of fame. Now you gotta go. Take all your stuff and go home. Cause that he 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 was calm. He was calm. I wouldn't have been so calm to him. We so, have come to that point in the show where we are going to initiate our TV dad draft. And then we are going to wrap it up with a little game that I played with the boys from Strikeout. We get things set up here with a nice little banner. There we go. TV Dad Draft. I believe we are going to go three rounds unless we get to the third round and we're thinking we want some more, so we'll play that by ear. But, TJ... You have the first pick. We are going to do this snake draft style. So I will be going second. Nate will be going third and getting the first pick of the second round. After we have done the draft and this whole thing is over, I will post the results online and we will have people vote on who had the best TV dad draft. I'm not going to start the clock. I feel like we have a pretty good sense for, you know, how long we should be taking with these picks. But just keep in mind, this is not for... Your own, you know, this is like um, family feud. It's not just your answer. It's what the people want as well. So just keep that in mind when you're picking these dads. All right. TV dad. I got to go Uncle Phil. Damn it. Ah! No. Oh, my God. You suck. Damn it. All right. I guess that's going to throw my whole thing off. Wow. Okay. Explain yourself. He needs no explanation. It's it's Uncle Phil. I mean, the guy was, you know, arguably one of the best TV dads around. Um, I we've talked about it numerous times on the show. I've I've even posted the video on Just Be a Dad page. The the episode where Will's dad walks out on him is to me the most powerful scene of any TV show. I mean that 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 hits on so many different levels. And Uncle Phil was there through all of it. That's my argument. Oh my God. You suck. That I, knew, I, knew I, I really good. wanted the black vote there. I can't lie. That was really going to play well into my demographic. <laughs> all right, fine. Fine. Okay. There is another man who, although he was a great TV dad at the time, I'm not sure I want to touch that hot pistol right about now. Oh no. Oh, don't you do it. So, I think in order to get... I'm going to go for a different demographic. You you stole the black vote from me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Southern Strategy here and try to get uh, the 65 and older crew on my side. I'm going to take Andy Taylor from the Andy Griffith Show. Okay. And that, you know, you've, you've got the whistling... Um, you've got Don Knotts there as your side piece. You know, you're always teaching the young man. Uh, what the hell is his name? Ron Howard. You're always teaching Ron Howard important lessons in life, living life in, uh, what's that, Mayberry? Yep. So I, I think I'm going to pull out, I'm going to tug on a lot of heartstrings there when it comes to the, uh, the senior crew and people who love nostalgia. So I'm taking Andy Taylor from the Andy Griffith Show. First overall pick, a little unconventional, but uh, you know sometimes you got to go that route. TJ knows I'm going with this one. So we've got back to back picks here. Let's see what he's got loaded in the chamber. Oh uh, well, I'm gonna go with Cliff Huxtable. Oh, okay. I gotta go with him. I gotta go with him. That was I the mean, people I didn't want to touch. <laughs> I'm a, I, I'm a good because I get it. he was a great TV dad. Now he's he's just I put him a bar on the Uncle Phil, um, you know he was a doctor, you know he he had he he had so many lessons that he had to teach to obviously his sons and his daughters like he 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 kind of he kind of went through it all he, he kind of went through it all I mean you know you had you you delivered babies in your basement and then you had to go upstairs and deal with your kids so I I gotta go with Cliff Huxtable he he has to be the one. It's so not fair to you. Because had not it been for all of the multiple dozens of allegations against 
Bill Cosby. Perhaps the best TV dad of all time, but there's just that baggage. He, you know what? I was, I, I would put it to like this. Like he's, I mean, I still, he still has to be, he still has to be in the top, top 10. He has to be like, I get everything that happened. He's know, Michael later Jackson in good. He's Michael Jackson good. You know yeah. what team with it, but yeah. damn it, he was good at what he did. But you, yeah, you, so you got to give it to him. You, you definitely have to get it, give it to him. So <laughs> I, I, I had to go with Cliff Hawks. Okay, you've 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 taken the high risk, high reward player in the first round. Let's see how you round it out with your second pick. Oh, second pick, I'm going to go with Mr. Carl Winslow. Ah, oh, you yes. <laughs> I t- Hey, I told you this is what happens when you go last. You get to pick your strategy. Oh, so no. I, Carl, Carl Winslow was the man. I've been binge watching Family Matters since since we talked about it on the show. Mm-hmm. And Carl Winslow, dude, he's he was definitely a great TV dad. I mean, you know, as much as he hated Steve Urkel, and as much as he kicked him out and sent him home, like he had nothing but love for Steve. He he took care of Steve like that was one of his own. And no matter how many times, even with even with Waldo, he took in Waldo and he, you know, he sat down, you know, he gave them lessons and he 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 kept them in line. He kept he definitely kept them in line. So that's definitely my my next pick that is a fantastic pick i'm not sure i can ever recover the black vote now i, I don't have carl winslow or cliff festival or uncle phil you there's 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 one more there's there's one more you just there is one more i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to uh take a risk on that one maybe uh maybe hope this player comes back to me maybe trade up who knows what happened <laughs> No, I love that. You know what I think of when I think of Carl Winslow, though? I never saw him and Stefan together. Did he ever interact with Stefan, I wonder? I don't I don't know. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Because I know there was that one episode where they became where they became Bruce Lee when they had to fight those gangsters. <laughs> I don't remember that one. But I don't I don't know if he I don't know if he uh if him and Stefan ever interacted, it, wait, didn't Stefan date his daughter and he? Yeah, interacted? but I don't, I don't know if they actually had any interaction because okay. a lot of the, a lot of Stefan's interactions was with Laura. And that's gonna, then, the, that's gonna be the first thing I look up after we get off this <laughs> tonight. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I got to take this man out of sheer fear that TJ will steal him from me if I don't in this round. I, I'm just too afraid. I'm going to go. With Tim the Tool Man Taylor of Home Improvement. Get him off the board here. Oh. Yes, that's right. I was going to hope he was going to be there for me. I really hope he was going to. I got to take off. (laughs) Got to take Tim the Tool Man. I mean, not a a true man's man. A guy who was a good husband to his wife. He He had a great sense of humor. He... Although he complained about the chores around the house, he did the chores around the house, even if it was turning the garbage disposal into a 800 horsepower what have you and it shot (laughs) through the roof and all that shit but you know he dealt with three boys who had mullets so there's there's that going for him could fix anything tried to fix anything mostly (laughs) fucked everything up but tim the tool man taylor a, a true man's man for our time and he taught us how to be dads and how to interact with your kids and i'm taking him off the board right here at pick what 202 so we are up to you, TJ. How are you finishing the second round? Second round. Give me just a second here. You need you need a big one. You need a big one. I'm gonna go old school. Mike Brady. You're trying to take my demographic. <laughs> oh. Mike Brady off the board. I like it. He was a dad, and he was also a stepdad. So he had, you know, the better of both worlds in that aspect. Good points. Good points. A lot of kids in the house. The story of a lovely lady and a man named Brady. That's right. <laughs> I mean, talk about issues. I mean, Jan got hit in the face with a football, and the youngest one was always a big nerd. Uh the the youngest girl was never gonna get a date because Marsha was the hot one. I mean, that's, he had that's, a lot to deal with. A lot to deal with. Mm. 
Pick 301. He's mulling it over here. Is it me? Is me up? It is like <sighs> you in the snake scenario. You get <sighs> you get another pick. All right. Um. Dang. Oh, See. sorry. We're we're on TJ. Yeah. Oh, it's, TJ. oh, is it me? It's me. Yeah. Again. It's yeah. you again. Yeah. It's you. You you, you go again. <clears throat> this last one for me is really hard. I'm gonna do my honorable mention first. I'm not gonna take this guy. Just because I love the show, Al Bundy. I'm not picking him. He peaked in high school, but he said all the things that we wanted to say. <laughs> so uh, that's my honorable mention. I'm going to take Red Foreman from that 70s show. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, he was a hard ass, but he was also, um, at the end of the day, I mean, he was he was still a dad. I mean, he, he got it. He was one step ahead of the kids for the most part. He already knew what they were going to say or he'd already been there and done that. But, uh, I mean, how can you go wrong with Red Foreman? He's going to put a boot in your ass. Here's what I'll say about that. Two great picks, two men who did not make TV Guide's 50 greatest TV dads of all time in 2014. So that's quite a perplexing uh, little stat there. Mike Brady, definitely on there. Uh, your first pick, Uncle Phil. Actually, is Uncle Phil on here? He better be. He better be. <laughs> all, the way, all the way down at 34. What? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. a low ball. I, I don't think there's 34. I don't think there's I don't think there's 33 greater dads than he was. They're playing to the older crowd in this list. I'll give you uh, that. Yeah, okay. For sure. Okay, so what what was the uh the pick was Al Bundy, TJ? No, the uh pick was Red Foreman. Red Foreman, okay. Nice way to round it out there. That's a good one. Don't be a dumbass. I like it. <laughs> All right. Um again, you know, I I'm playing to the older white crowd here. Southern strategy coming to me. My third and final pick is going to be Dan Connor of Roseanne. A guy who not only could deal with a haggard bitch of a wife and Roseanne who clearly never put out and <laughs> always, you know, always was doing whatever she wanted to do. I don't think she ever went down on Dan. I don't think she ever gave him a back rub. Nothing like that. Uh, here's a guy who was a fantastic father to, you know, uh, an older blonde an older blonde daughter who probably spent her nights in ways that we would not all approve of had a middle child daughter who could have gone either way from being a lesbian or, you know, a, uh, whoever she's dating now. I think she, he's a writer on today's show. <laughs> he started his own podcast. And then you have the youngest son, DJ, who seems to come in and out through it all, even with a, a crazy sister-in-law. Dan Connor has been the man that we all look towards. For guidance, even without Roseanne on the show, he, he perseveres. And I'm going to give it to John Goodman. Dan Connor is my third and final pick for this TV Dad draft. And now, Nate, you have the honor of rounding it out. You've had a great draft thus far. Let's see if you finish it. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to surprise both of you. I got to go with the man that when we were doing our podcast that we actually forgot off, we left off our list, and it was kind of embarrassing. So I gotta go with Archie Bunker. Oh, love it! You bastard! You're gonna win this. <laughs> so I, I mean, that, he he, oh. he was Red Foreman before Red Foreman. God, like, he was the blue collar worker. He was the, the the veteran in the family. Even though he had a liberal son, he was the man. He 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 brought it to the screen. He you know he brought everything. It was it was comedy when he was there like it is you, you can't you can't just ignore that man and we did and i felt oh, bad he, so he, i like i had to part of the son -in -law. yeah i had that's why i had to go because i because we forgot about him when we do when we were rating our you know tv dads and i kind of felt bad because like my dad used to watch this show like he made me watch the show with him so i was like yeah he has to be the last pick I definitely feel like it was a good one. This was a good one. Cliff, you know, Cliff Huxtable is going to give me problems. A lot of people, gonna, a lot of people are going to hate it. But 
if you go back and you watch the show, you could see the the value he brought to the you know to the table when it came to raising his kids and delivering the life lessons to his kids and his friends. And you know he had you know his wife was kind of you know his wife was was a bit of an issue, but you know <laughs> who what wife isn't you know? So I, I think it's pretty decent. Like I said, Cliff is gonna give me some issues, but we'd be all right. I, I like trouble players. I can fix those. Personally, I think you killed it. I think if you can compartmentalize the fantastic dad he was on TV to the horrible rapist he was in real life, <laughs> let it be a good draft for you. I mean, everyone has to pick. Everyone has to have one troubled player, you know. So he's gonna be my troubled player, and he, it's gonna pay off for me. It's gonna pay out in the long run. TJ, you killed it with the first overall pick, Uncle Phil. The Brady Bunch is going to be popular with the older crowd for sure. And Red Foreman, it's going to hit the younger crowd. Don't be a dumbass. I feel like that's going to stick in a lot of minds. I, I can't wait to see how this turns out. Uh, I'm feeling – I feel I feel like most of my fantasy teams, when it comes to my current uh, team I have right here, a steady group that's not going to score me a whole lot of points, okay? <laughs> If I, if I want a baseline, they're probably going to bring me all the way through. No peaks, no valleys, just straight bland uh, oatmeal. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, I think I hope Archie, Archie should make up for the cliff issue. Well, you know what's funny about Archie to me is I feel like most people want to demonize Archie as a misogynist, as a bigot, as a racist. But I think that was all part of the plan when it came to the show. I think they wanted to highlight yeah, I mean yeah. that the, the, the show, like again, like this was back when you know people weren't so sensitive. You could say certain jokes on TV, and no one feelings got hurt. No, there were probably a small group of people who feelings got hurt, but at the same time, yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. Nowadays, you could you put that on TV, they cancel it the first show. <laughs> Their pilot not even taking off. Well, and that show introduced the Jeffersons, which was huge. Yeah, yeah. And that, and you know, but people want to get rid of they want to get rid of the past and the foundation. So, but like I said, I think I, I think it's pretty good. I think Archie Bunker's gonna it's gonna sit well with a lot of people. Uh, Cliff, not so much. Uh, Carl Winslow, I don't know. You know, those are those are the solid players. I, I took a risk with the first one, but I was like, I think it's gonna pay off. So. <laughs> I had to clip he I believe I watched the Cosby show every day it came on TV. If it was on TV, I watched it. Even to this day, like if I come across the Cosby show, I'm gonna sit and watch it. I don't think about the rapey stuff. <laughs> Just watch the TV show. Cause it's it's a good show. It's 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 definitely a good TV show. Same here, man. I mean, when it came to Nick and Knight, I was always watching the Cosby show. I thought that um I believe it was Lisa who was the middle daughter. Yes. I had a crush on her from time to time. I mean, when she had the whole dread thing going on up top, mm -hmm. there might, you know, there was something about that, that, you know, you got a young man for her now. What? You got to fight Aquaman for her now. <laughs> yeah, you do. Oh, really? Jason yeah. Momoa with her? Yeah. Yes. You have to oh, fight wow. him for her. <laughs> Dang. Talk about a power couple. Okay. And uh, I mean, uh, even Rudy isn't so bad looking these days, from what I understand. Oh no, Rudy's Rudy. Rudy is she grew she grew up. That's for sure. She she grew up, and it's 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 a lot to look at. <laughs> it is definitely a lot to look at. Oh man. So some honorable mention dads that did get left off the list. I I did want to bring up, obviously Howard Cunningham from Happy Days was a good one. You had the father from Good Times. I forget his name, but you guys mentioned him on one of your podcasts. Yep. Good time. Good times. Oh, okay. Uh, James. That's James something. He would I think he'd have made a good pick. He definitely he'd have got, he got you the black vote again. Sure. <laughs> I know. That's for them, I, sure. know. <laughs> I might regret that Dan Connor pick the more I think about it. <laughs> and then um even uh who I got here. Ward Cleaver. What about the what about him? You know, uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit too vanilla. Maybe a little bit. Too <laughs> George Lopez. If I wanted to go down a different route, but anyway, Red um, Fox. We are yeah, because he had Lamont. You know, yeah, yeah he, he was. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sanford and Son. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking also of Sanford and Son as well. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a good one. I watched a lot of episodes of Sanford and Son. In fact, I won radio trivia on my local I100 classic rock show one time because I knew one of the voices from Sanford and Son. So that was a lot of fun. Um, gentlemen, you've been very generous with your time. Can't appreciate. Thank you guys enough. We are going to play one more game to wrap this thing up. This game is called Know Your Co host. We're so screwed. <laughs> we'll see. All right. So let me actually uh, let me make a new banner here. Stick it in there for good measures. Or the hyphen, make it official. Okay. TJ, we'll start with you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> there we go. Uh, TJ, first question of Know Your Co-Host. What is Nate's birthday? Don't know. Yeah, he really... We hadn't talked about that, so he doesn't know. I don't even know my birthday right now. Nate, when is your birthday? My birthday is August 11th. I was born in 1987. 87. All right. You have the same birthday as my girlfriend. Do I? Oh, wow. That's hilarious. <laughs> there you go. Now I'll never time. forget it. Now I'll never forget it. And my daughter's, my daughter's three days after mine. August 14th. That's when my daughter's is and our puppy blue. Bro, I'm bringing this up for you guys. <laughs> We this this honestly this conversation has never really come up <laughs> once. TJ, what is Nate's middle name? I don't know. Take a I guess. really don't. Take a guess. Take a guess. It's not Huxable. <laughs> All right, Nate. Relieve him of his uh relieve him of his tragic woes over there. It is Scott. Scott? Yes, S C O T T. Okay. TJ. What is Nate's partner's name? Kelsey. There you go. What is his child's name? You know this, so I'm not even, I'm not even gonna bail you out on this one. <laughs> If you were to ask me that 10 minutes ago, I could have told you. <laughs> if you were to ask me that 10 minutes ago, I could have told you. McKenzie, you have had McKenzie, a few there you go. There you go. Glasses of whiskey, so I'll give you that. <clears throat> you are the whiskey pro. <laughs> Watch out for good measure. Jeez. What else you yeah. got? You okay? Uh-huh. I'm good. What's your daughter's name, Nate? <laughs> he said it. He said McKenzie. McKenzie. Oh, okay. My yeah. bad. <clears throat> um, the city and state Nate was born in. Atlanta, Georgia. What? No, 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 no. No. We no. Had New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> I was thinking football team. Sorry. <laughs> Do you happen to know what Nate's first job was? No. Pizza delivery? Hell no. No, no I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> I, don't think we're talking about. I worked at McDonald's. Oh, snap. All right. So we have, uh, what were we, one for five on that one? Yeah. yeah we're we going to probably do pretty bad on this one. Yeah. Like, let's see if we can flip the script and get a better score here. Nate. What when is TJ's birthday? March twenty seventh. I don't know the year. Is no, is either twenty seventh or the twenty sixth? Cause we actually we we're, we're planning to come out there for his birthday for a cross for. I think it's the twenty sixth because the twenty seventh is the Saturday. So I think his birthday is March twenty sixth. Is he right, TJ? He's right. Hey, all right. How about the middle name? I definitely don't know that. I would say Liam. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know. It's got to be James if it's TJ. Nope. Oh, okay. Martin. <laughs> Martin? Mm-hmm. So it's TJ Martin. Long story. So it's got to be. <laughs> it's got to be T Martin J. Yeah, T Martin J. There we go. Ah. No way, okay. that's not right because your last name is Burns. <laughs> I had my name legally changed when I was thirteen. Oh, okay. Gotcha, guys. Gotcha. Wait, seriously? <laughs> yeah. That's uh, Well, we gotta have that conversation. We will. <laughs> <laughs> What about TJ's partner's name? Samantha. What are kids, including stepkids, names? Carter. Haley. You're going to hate me on this one. Because I'm going to forget. I forget two of them. Uh, They won't be watching this. Cassie. Oh, there's this last one I can't think of. You got too many kids. I only have one. <laughs> so it's Carter, Cassie, Haley, and the one you're forgetting is the one who's watching you right now. No, he's not. Which one is it? I I can't think of his last name. I can't think of his name. Yeah, I can't. Uh... what's my girlfriend's name? Oh, Sam Samantha? Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Easy enough. That's like uh, that's like the guys that strike out. Both of their freaking partners' names are Lizzie. It's too damn easy. <laughs> Even though uh, I think, uh, yeah, I won't go into that one. Um, <laughs> Nate, what was TJ's first job? Hmm. I don't think we ever talked about it. We we hadn't. I don't know. With pizza delivery, maybe. <laughs> That's what he got. So fuck it. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. Cart pusher at Walmart. Hey, there you go. You know what? I bet you were a damn good cart pusher too. I feel like you were real strict. You were the guy that the other guys didn't really like because you're always making them work too hard. Too serious about getting the cart. They could never find me. <laughs> Nate, what, what were your responsibilities when you first came into McDonald's? What, what were you the uh, were you the, the fry guy? No, I never did fries. I didn't like people, so I stayed in the back. So I I did all the cook I did all the cooking and making the sandwiches. And Nate loves the McRib. It, no, I don't. Actually, I don't. It's the worst. Listen to me. I don't eat the McRib for the simple fact that I know how it's made. <laughs> See, that's why I will never eat that. It, trust me, it's not real meat. Just know that. It's not. It's not real. It's not real at all. Ryan Francis, I couldn't agree more. You came in right at the end. We had our TV dad draft. We had our know your co-host. If you have any questions, real quick before we sign off, because I'm going to get these guys to do plugs. Feel free to put in your questions. I do have a question for you guys. You each have a gamer streaming tag, so to speak. Uh, Nate, you are a Black Mass. TJ, you are a Whiskey Pro. When it comes to streaming and um, being a gamer, is it difficult because you find that your kids always want to join in? Like, what has that been like to find time to stream as a dad and partner? For me, it's really easy because my kids don't want to play with me ever. (laughs) Um, I'm horrible at Fortnite. Carter knows this. Um, Apex, I have my moments, but for the most part, I'm subpar. So um, I got into streaming other games, and they have no interest at all. So made it pretty easy. Every once in a while, this week, I think uh, Haley's going to join me on a stream. Oh, she's, nice. She's, she's, she's here on uh, spring break. So tomorrow or Wednesday, uh, she'll, she'll be on a stream with me for a little bit. She'll pop in and say hi. Okay. Yeah. It's simple for me because my, my little one doesn't. She, I mean, she'll, she'll come in. She'll want to sit and watch. But other than that. I mean, she doesn't really want to play. Not yet, anyway. She has her own little games that she plays on her phones and tablets. So, uh, for the most part, I mean, it's it's not that it's not that hard. It's just you know finding time to do it, and then you know spending time with you know the wife and kid here occasionally. 
So it's not that bad. Well, please, people, if you get a chance, check out Blast Black Mass Gaming. As a streamer, you go through Facebook and what else? I mean, are you on YouTube, Twitch, all uh, that? I'm mostly, I'm, I'm pretty much mostly on Facebook. So at Black Mass Gaming on Facebook. So, I mean, occasionally I do Twitch, but I mostly do Facebook for the most part. And Whiskey Pro is on mm-hmm. Twitch, Twitch only. Twitch only. Okay. Because yeah, his setup is annoying. <laughs> That's why I tried helping him with that, and it was. Mm-mm. Nope. And when can we find the Just Be a Dad podcast? Every Tuesday night, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, live on Facebook. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys so much. You have been awesome. Really appreciate the time. Can't wait to have another podcast with you, too. It was a blast. And, uh, yeah, enjoy your night, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Awesome, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Later.